hello welcome to the Wallwinder first video podcast my name is Francis um, I'm one of a partnership um, called Wallwinders and we run knitting escape days uh, we do a few workshops um, knit alongs that kind of thing um, in person um, locally and one of our we do a number of escape days that's our, our most popular thing um we do um so the most popular thing that we do is a um trip down a canal four hour cruise down a canal um going along um cruising along the uh, canal looking at um the wildlife and so forth while we're knitting while we're chatting tea and cake um and it's just a lovely it's a lovely escape it's a little bit of a knitting spa really so um so that's what that's um oh, certainly one of the things that i do um uh, when i'm i'm not doing this um and um it's possible that at some point my partner Alison might join me on one of these videos as she she does wall winders with me uh, but for the most time it's going to be me hence the wall winder um and i've been inspired to do these videos because I've got an obscene pile of unfinished projects and these are those that are closest to being finished um, and I thought right okay let's get on top of this get let's let's get some of these finished you know and start wearing them um, and so I thought that's what made me think well let's share them with other people and that might help um, inspire me to um, get them finished and take you on the journey um, while I do that and then of course once we finish them we need to be casting on something else don't we um, so uh, there that's that's the idea behind it so start off then um, what we've got our first um, this item is finished um, this is um, the vermilion scarf um, and it's from the Rowan Ruby Anniversary magazine, which I think is number 64. Um, Ruby, because of the anniversary that it was celebrating, um, but the first part of the book is all red items. I love red. Um, and um, that's where um, this has come from. Now, I have varied some of the colours and some of the yarns, and really that's the beauty of this. You can play around and do use what you've got in your stash and what you like and so forth. It is actually crochet, which is unusual for me. You won't see me do many crochets. I'm really, truly a knitter. Um, treble crochet, um, you're going along from one end to the other and then you cut your yarn and then you start with the next colour, again, starting from the same end that you started from before, leaving your tail and coming along here. So you have, let me unwind it a little bit, you can see, so you've got, and the tail, so really pleased with this. Um, took a long time to finish. I started it, I can remember the day I started it. It's funny, isn't it, sometimes how you can remember a day. Uh, it was 2019, it was the run up to Christmas um, and we had an event going on um, and um, yeah, so that, I remember that was the time um, when I got it cast on, so it's taken me a long time and that's really, uh, I've got other things that have taken a long time, this is probably one of the longest outstanding things, I've usually, if it's got any longer than that, I've given up, frogged it and, you know, used the arm for something else, which I definitely do quite a bit of. Um, but um, I think because it was crocheted, I kept putting it down and then getting out of the flow of it really. So anyway, so it's done. Um, I've not got any other crochet things planned at the moment. Um, so at some point I'd like to do a bit of a stash busting using the, you know, those odd half balls up in some kind of a um, crochet blanket. But anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves because I've got a lot of stuff to finish, haven't I? So, um, so if you, coming up now, you will see um, a little video just running you through quickly um, where I'm putting on the fringe and, and finishing that. So we had the ends um, from each line of crochet, but I then added in more um, yarn um, 
just to really thicken it up a bit, give it give the fringe a bit more volume. So yeah, have a look. Um, and then I'll come back to you in a moment and talk to you a little bit more about what I'm up to.
Okay, right, so the next thing we've got here, this is Smitten um, by Lisa Richardson. And this was in um, a book called Pure Cashmere by Lisa Richardson, which was released when Rowan released their Pure Cashmere um, range. Um, Pure Cashmere is a double knit, so you could, um, any um, standard double knit yarn, you could knit this pattern in. Um, I've knitted it in Island Blend double knit, which is a discontinued yarn, um, but there's certainly, when I've looked around, there's certainly plenty more of it because I had to get another skein to finish it, just that last little bit of edging. Um, and I found certainly the website I was looking on, there was over a hundred. So the, there is, you know, quite a bit of yarn still out there. Um, and of course a better price. So, so this is, I really love this. Um, it is, I particularly love the back. So let me show you the back. There we go. So that's fabric. So you can see you've got, you've got, um, two, uh, diagonal lines um, and they're created by a one by one cable. So a one by one cable, you, I, well, I wouldn't, it's obviously complete personal choice, but I wouldn't do it with a, a needle. Um, I would slip the stitch, um, then knit the next one and then knit the one after. Um, so and obviously depending on which way you do it, depends on which way around, around you do it, so whether it's left um, facing or uh, left leaning even, or right leaning. Um, so, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a lovely bright color. Um, I wear a lot of navy, it's gonna go really well with the navy. So um, I'm really pleased with how it's coming out. Just got a few little bits and pieces um, to finish on it um, and um, if you watch the video coming up you'll see me blocking um, the sleeves um, to help give it that nice um, even flat um, look to it which makes it easier to to sew up so coming up you'll see the um, see the blocking and then uh, come back to me and uh, we'll have a look at the next one. Okay, so the next item I've got is what I call a dress cardigan, so a fairly short um, cardigan. Um, again, this is very nearly finished, not quite, and I'm going to aim to have it finished to show you next episode. Um, it's patterns called Angelou, um, and it's uh, again a Rowan pattern. Um, it's in double knit. This is knitted in Mordell. Originally, I think the pattern was done in a cotton, um, a double knit cotton. I think it was Rowan Summerlight or something like that. Um, and I've done it. In, I've done it in Mordell more than anything because I had some Mordell in this colour that I wanted to use for a dress cardigan. 
Um, it's a really straightforward um, knit. Um, I enjoy, so I, there are three things that um, I love about knitting and one of them is the mindfulness of it, the relaxation. Um, and this is quite straightforward. So you have got, let me, if I bring it up a bit closer, you can see that there are um, four rows of stocking stitch um, and then you've got two slip stitch rows. So you're slipping a stitch, purling a stitch, slipping a stitch. Um, and then you go do two rows of that and then you're back to the four rows of stocking stitch. So really quite easy. And when I talk about how much I enjoy the mindfulness of knitting for me, although I like the challenge of a knit that's a little bit more, requires more concentration, more careful pattern following, um, it's always nice. And I find from a relaxation point of view, that for me it's a straightforward knit something like this um and um smitten that i showed you before and indeed this scarf they're all quite relaxing easy knits and you will see you know some cable work and collar work popping up in between as well um, it's not that i don't like them but i find in reality i don't pick them up as as often as i go to the more relaxing knit because i think often that's what i'm knitting for is just for that relaxation um, so, um, yeah, so when I'm doing my knits, I, or I have done for the last few years anyway, um, started doing my shoulders a bit differently. So instead of just casting off the way you're usually instructed to on a pattern, I'm casting off, um, using short row, my shoulders using short row shaping, um, and then free needle bind off. So I'm going to bring this up to you a little bit in the hope that you can see it a bit better. So um, we've got um, when so short row shaping um, where it's asking you to cast off eight stitches for example instead of doing that you get to the you knit to the last eight you then do a wrap and turn um, on that eighth stitch and then knit back and then it might say cast off another eight when you go back to that end. So then that time you stop eight stitches before the previous eight stitches, wrap and turn and go back. That means you end up with two sets of live stitches. By live stitches, I mean stitches sitting on your needles. And then you do the free needle bind off, which is quite a straightforward technique. Um, and that is, so you've got two sets of live stitches front and back and you take your third needle, hence free needle bind off, and you knit the first two stitches, one from each needle together, then you knit another two together, one from each needle, and then you take the first of those stitches created over the second one, and then you go back and knit another two together, take the first over the second, and you keep going casting off that way. So it's really quite straightforward to do. And coming up in a video in a minute, you'll see me doing that. Um, so, um, yeah, before um, we do that, I will just sign off at this point. I won't um, witter on um, too much. Um, as I said, there were three things that are important to me about knitting. It's why knitting, you know, is a big part of my life. So there is the mindfulness of it, the relaxation, whatever you want, want to call it. Um, and then there is the community aspect of it, um, which is what inspired us around wall winders, because we knew there were lots of people out there that wanted to get together with other knitters and do things with other knitters. Um, as I say, originally that started as workshops, but actually we found what people really enjoyed was the... Um, events where we got together and did different things around a knitting theme. Um, so uh, we were involved in a knitting train um, earlier in the summer. In, well, no, last summer, sorry, yeah, last May. Wow, where's time go? Um, and yeah, so we've done a number, we've done a, a, a little tour around a part of London, um, 
all related around the knitting theme. Um, so, so that's the community aspect. And then the other side of it is the creativity. And that's probably where I do enjoy the challenge of the knitting because that's all part of the fun of the creativity, isn't it? That, and actually taking, you know, these, these bits like this, you know, and, and finishing them off and, you know, getting your sleeve on and building it into a garment that you can then try on and wear and being able to alter it to fit you. You'll find I'll talk to you about this more in other episodes. I'm a strange size, you know, um, and they don't make clothes to fit me terribly well. So I love the fact that with knitting, I can make it because I'm quite um, on the small side. I can make it shorter to fit me um, whilst also making sure that it's wide enough in places where it needs to be wide enough, but not so wide that it swamps me in the areas where I'm a bit smaller. So, um, yeah, the creativity um, and the satisfaction of making those projects is, is, is the sort of third part of the knitting that I really enjoy. So, um, there'll be lots more to talk about on the next podcast. So, I hope you'll come and join me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, maybe on the next podcast we might get out and have a little look at the garden as well. Um, and as I say, you know, on other podcasts maybe we'll we'll get out and explore further about as well. So um, let me know what you what you think, um, and you know anything particularly you'd like to see. Um, and yeah, look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, take care. Bye bye.